Hello, welcome to our today's tutorial, and we are going to design a steel beam using BS5950 code. The question is, a 5.8 meter long, fully laterally restrained beam is to carry unfactored, uniformly distributed load of 95 kilonewton per meter along its entire span. If loading consists of 40% imposed load, and 60% dead load, inclusive of self-weight, check the adequacy of a 533 by 210 by 92 kilogram per meter universal beam if used in accordance to BS5950 with respect to, we have to check with respect to flexion, shear, deflection, and web buckling. This is the data given. We have been told to assume grade 43 steel. This has a PY of 275 Newton per millimeter squared. We have to take PC is equivalent to 101 Newton per millimeter squared. And we assume the beam rests on 100 millimeter end bearing. Step number one, we'll have to sketch our beam. This is our beam with the load uh, UDL consisting of dead and imposed load. Then we have to calculate total unfactored load will be given by 95 multiplied by total length 5.8, which is 551 kilonewton. Imposed load is equivalent to 40% of total load, which is 0 0.4 times 551, 210.4. Dead load, which is 60% of 551 is 3. 30.6 kilonewton. Ultimate design load is equal to 1.4 times dead load plus 1.6 times imposed load, which is 815.48 kilonewton. We know that this is a symmetrical arrangement. Reaction at A is equivalent to reaction at B, which is equivalent to a half of the ultimate design load, which is equal to 850.48 times 0 0.5 or times a half, getting 407.74 kilonewton. Now from there, we move to section properties. For section properties, we use tables. We obtain them from the table. So this is the table. We obtain the section properties. We have two tables. Now we move, maybe this is the first table. We move along 533 times 210 times 92. So all properties that are required, you see I've wrote there, I obtain, you move along 92, you obtain what is relevant or what is required of you. This is, you move along this line. And when you finish other properties, still you move along 533 to 1092, you obtain the property as simple as that from these tables. From there now, we will proceed to calculate the epsilon naught. This one simple here, which is given by 275 over PY power a half, which is our case here, PY is 275. So it is 275 over 275 power half, giving us one. Another thing, we know that the young modulus of steel, capital E is given by 205 times 10 power 6 pascals. Now, part one of our question was to calculate the flexor. So now let's flexor is same as bending. Now the PY will be equivalent to 275 Newton per millimeter square. Why? Because the flange thickness capital T has a value below 16 millimeter. These criteria are given in a table attached, which will not go to it. From there, we go to design moment. Now, remember, we've converted our load from a uniformly distributed load into a point load acting at the center or mid span. We know design moment for a point load at the center is given by PL over 4 or WL over 4 four, which is 815, you multiply by 5.8, you divide by 4, you get 1182.33 kilonewton meter. Something, let me make it clear. 
For the purpose of this question, you don't need to calculate extra moment due to self-weight. Why? Because they said the load given is inclusive of the self-weight, but you will find a question that will require you to also compute the self-weight of the beam. Now, how do you compute self-weight of the beam? You compute it by taking self-weight equivalent to 1.4, which is a factor for dead load, times this 92 here, looking at the beam is 533 times 210 times 92 kilogram per meter. Now, the, the last, the third value of a beam of a, a section is mass per meter in terms of kilogram. That is why, and we know that for you to get weight, you take mass times gravity. So gravity is 9.81. Now we divide by 10 power three to convert it from Newton per meter to kilonewton per meter. And then you multiply by 5.8 squared over eight. 5.8 is L. Remember for IUDL, we know that moment is WL squared over eight. So all these 1.4, into bracket 92 times 9.81 times over 10 power 3 is W. Then L is 5.8. So it's WL squared over 8. Now, as I said, now here, the total imposed moment, please understand, total imposed moment, don't add the two. Why? Because already the question specified, the load given included self-weight. So we will use 1182.33 kilonewton meter. But if they had not specified it includes self-weight, we would have done it the way I've done here. So the total moment would be the sum of imposed moment plus sum of self a moment from self-weight. But for this one, we'll only use this moment of 1182.33. Then from there, we go to moment capacity of beam. Moment capacity of beam is given by strength multiplied by the plastic modulus along xx. This plastic modulus along xx, you read it from the table I've shown you, which is 275, you multiply by 2370. Now this times 10 power negative three is to ensure the value we get is in terms of kilonewton meter. So don't worry about 10 power three. 10 power three is just a conversion of all these units because 275 is Newton per millimeter squared and then 2370 is centimeter cube. Now this 10 power three is just a factor to take care and end up with kilonewton meter. So we get the moment capacity is 651.75 kilonewton. There is a check you need to ensure that the moment capacity will not be more than 1.2 PYZ. This Z is a elastic modulus along XX. 1.2 PY is 275, then Z is a 2000. So 1.2 PYZ is 660 and our moment capacity is 651. So the condition is met, you say is okay. Now looking at it, you find that the imposed moment is greater than the moment capacity. It means the moment, the moment being applied is more than what our section can carry. So the section is not adequate when we consider moment. Let's move to shear. Now in shear, we say like the condition number one, we look at the ratio small d over small t, which and compare it with 70 epsilon lot. In this case, you find it is 46.7, which is below 70. We don't need to consider shear buckling. Now we go to shear capacity of the section. Shear yeah. capacity is given by PV. You take 0 0.6, you multiply by PY, you multiply by web thickness T, you multiply by overall depth capital D, which is a, 0 0.6 times 275, which is PY. Our T was 10.2 and our D was 533.1. And then multiplying by 10 power 3, negative 3 is to change from Newton to kilonewton so that we get 897.21 kilonewton. Then shear stress. FV is the same as reaction A which is equivalent to reaction B, which will be equivalent to 407.74 kilonewton. This implies that what our beam can carry 
is 897.21 kilonewton. What is being subjected on the beam is 407.74 kilonewton. Hence, the section is adequate because it has a capacity to carry more than what it's being subjected to. So when we check for shear, the section is adequate for shear. Let's go for a deflection. Now, please be careful. When you consider deflection, you only use factored imposed load. Factored imposed load. And remember we said we converted our load into a point load acting at mid-span. So we know that for a point load acting at mid-span, deflection is given by the load multiplied by length cubed divided by 48 EI. Now we can substitute, which is now it is one, this 352 comes from 1.6 factor of imposed load multiplied by 220.4. Then you multiply by our length is 5.8, you will cube it divided by 48 times 205 times 10 power 6, which is E, young modulus, times I, that second area moment, you read it from the table, which is 55, 400 centimeter power 4. You multiply it by 10 power 8. You multiply the denominator by 10 power negative 8, so that the value you get, deflection will be in terms of meters. So you get 0 0.013 meter. I can convert it to millimeter by multiplying by 1,000 to get 13 millimeter. From there, I go for permissible deflection. Permissible deflection for this case of beam is given by the span of the beam divided by 360. It's a fixed formula span over 360, which is 5,800 divided by 360 is 16 millimeter. So the beam is allowed to deflect up to 16 millimeter, but the actual deflection is only going to 13 millimeter. Hence, we can say the beam satisfies deflection criteria. We go to web buckling. Web buckling. Now, in web buckling, we have we have different formula based on the condition. Our condition here is that this simple here, this alpha subscript is equivalent to 50 millimeter is less than 0 0.7 D, which is 3.55 millimeter. And beam is fully lateral restrained. That is from the equation we are told the beam is fully laterally restrained. Now, it means the buckling resistance will, Px will calculate using this particular formula here. And now this PBW, it is it's called the the way bearing capacity, you have to calculate it. But in our question here, please get it carefully. In our question here, we are going to replace it by the given PC. We'll put the value of PC that 101. So we'll not calculate the web bearing capacity. Now, if we substitute, we said this simple here is 50. 0.7 D, we know it's that 333.55. You substitute our N here, our N is 2 and our K is 28.3. You get the a value of 54.21 kilonewton. So our buckling resistance, it can resist 54.21 kilonewton, but it is subjected to F of the shear force of shear force of 407. So this implies that the section is not adequate in regard to uh, back, backlink resistance. So we have to design web stiffeners to aid the section to withstand the shear force. And note that in this question, like I've told you, the, this PBW, the weight bearing capacity, we've replaced it, we, we've taken it as equivalent to, to this PC, which was given. And then K, this K we've used here, we've used in our equation here, is given by P, plane thickness plus R, root radius. And N is calculated using as 2 plus 
B E over K. B E over K. Let me now show you this is a different pass. Now look at B1. B1 is the bearing length. Bearing length, you are told it is 100 millimeter. Then B subscript E is the distance from where the member ends and from the where the bearing end. For our case here, we assume that the beam flashes with the bearing, meaning B E is zero. Like the end of the beam and end of bearing, they are at the same level. Now, if that's the case, you find that, and this simple here, this alpha, is normally taken from the end of the beam to the middle of the bearing. But for our case, the end of the beam and end of bearing are at the same level. So basically, this alpha E is only equivalent to a half of bearing length, which is a half of B1. That's why we got it as 50 as above, because B1 is 100, so alpha E is 50. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe. Share with your friend, comment, you can ask any question. See you next time.